All right, so we got the bikes all loaded up. We dropped my little brother off at home and my youngster and I are going to head out to a motocross track a couple hundred kilometers away from us. And we ended up finding out that there's a shortcut that we can take. So there's this uh, sketchy little ferry crossing that crosses over the river that's gonna save us about an hour of time. So we're gonna hop on that. We're gonna get to the other side. We're gonna show you this track, so stay tuned. All right, so where we left off with our last video is sort of where we're picking up, but kind of sort of not really. Uh, so we picked up, we were heading to the track, we were gonna do some riding. Well, we got to the track and it was empty. There was only one guy riding. And we kind of came to the realization that my youngster's bike was just a little bit on the small size. And we got talking to a few people and ultimately we, uh, we made a decision. So that's what we did. We sold my youngster's bike. We are on our way to pick him up a much better bike. I shouldn't say a much better bike, a more fitting bike for him. I mean, he's 13 years old, five foot six, 165 pounds. An 85 was, it was small. So we'll pick back up here in a few minutes. All right, so that's what we end up getting our hands on. He picked up, I say he, because he bought it with his money, a 2017 KTM SXF 250 with 58 hours on the build. Yeah, 58 hours or something like that. The box there has three sets of plastics, another seat, as well as a whole bunch of other spare parts. We don't really know what's in there because we didn't open it up. But uh, yeah, she's got the full FMF exhaust system on it, breakaway levers, um, aftermarket suspension. I forget the brand of suspension he said. Um, yeah, he got a heck of a deal. I'm not gonna tell you what he paid for this, but it was a good deal, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a heck of a deal. And uh, I took it down the road and I gotta say, it, it feels really good. It feels just, just like my new YZ. So we're gonna get this thing back home. We're gonna do a little bit of a tune up on it and we'll be back with you. In case you've been living under a rock and haven't been watching the news, our riding season got cut short. Our town's literally caught on fire. So we were burning uh, all up here on the mountain was burning. And then, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it from here, possibly, all the way down there across the water, we were also burning. So it was a very, very bad, substantial damage was done. Several houses were lost. It was, it was very bad. So riding season got cut short and uh, this is kind of where we're picking up. So yeah, it's uh, not ideal, but man, let me tell you, what a nightmare dealing with that red ford so I'll, I'll talk more about that here in a second let's we're going through bikes and vehicles like we are going through underwear so <laughs> this is it's kind of hilarious so this video has been spread out over a, a couple weeks and uh, this is where we ended up so shortly after that clip we started running into some electrical issues with the red ford long story short the dealership had to buy that truck back from me so when they did I immediately went on the hunt looking for something that would save me money on fuel costs while I'm towing our bikes or even just, you know, using it for work purposes because my Dodge is a, a great truck and I like that truck for off-roading, but it is so bad on fuel. It doesn't help that it's got big tires on it, but uh, that thing averages 22 liters per hundred when we're towing. This thing, towing the same load, averages 11 liters per hundred so pretty substantial fuel savings right there so we're we're coming out ahead on that one but uh more so it's just the future proofing myself with my truck the the f-150 was a very nice truck very comfortable truck It'd be a great truck if i wasn't going to use it as a truck per se because you do kind of feel things what i mean by that is um it claims it can haul a lot of weight it claims it gets X amount for fuel mileage. Does it really get that in the real world? No. I think the way they test these things out with the EPA is down a hill with a, a tailwind because there's no way. I drove that thing like a grandpa, you know, barely on the gas. And it was, it was not giving me the results I expected it to. And the, the whole purpose in buying that truck, like I said, was to save money while towing our dirt bikes. That thing averaged 18 liters per 100K. That's not what I 
had anticipated. I anticipated it was going to save me money, but in fact, it actually wasn't. So, like I said, we had some electrical issues. Turns out it was in a flood. The dealership bought it back. And I started scratching my head thinking, what am I going to do? What kind of vehicle am I going to get myself into? Well, if you know anything about my channel, you know I've had several diesel trucks. So my immediate thought was, go back to a diesel truck. However, with that being said, my neighbor, the last diesel truck I had was constantly putting notes on my truck claiming it was too loud. It was this, it was that, it was the other thing. It was a 7.3 liter Ford. They are a pretty noisy, obnoxious diesel engine. So I kind of understood. So I sold it and, and ended up buying a Dodge. Do I regret that? Absolutely. Because that was a unicorn of a truck. But nonetheless, diesel trucks is where it's at for efficiency and longevity and reliability. I think it's the right choice. You know, it's got everything we need. It's got the leather interior. I wish I had a sunroof. Beggars can't be choosers, right? But for what I got this truck for, I, I thought it was a scam when I seen it posted on Facebook Marketplace. I was like, there's no way that's real. I thought it was 100% a scam. And when the uh, woman gave me the address to the truck, I realized it was most likely real. Turns out they had sold their property far away, moved to the city, didn't need a big truck anymore. And so, so they sold their property, sold their company and moved to the city. No use for a one ton diesel truck. So they put it up for sale just to, to move it quick and I'm glad I seen it when I did because I seen it, it was posted five minutes before I seen it and I snatched it up. What is it exactly did I snatch up? Well, this is it. It is a 2011 Ford F-350 with the 6.7 Power Stroke. Body's not in the nicest condition. Do I really care? No, not particularly. It's got some rust here, but we can make some cool videos out of that. It's got some paint flake in here. It's got some rust behind our fender flares, but, at the end of the day, it's got the contractor canopy and it's got a heavy duty bed slide, which is gonna be great for us for camping and hauling our dirt bike stuff. So check this out. It comes way out. So it's not ideal having this type of canopy on here, but I do use a trailer as you can see in my videos. I prefer towing the bikes in the trailer. It just it makes life a little easier for me. You're probably saying I'm crazy because I like to tow a trailer rather than utilize the box of the truck. Well, in some situations, yes, but most of the, the areas that we ride and the things we do, having it in a trailer is actually easier because we can put our gear and other necessities in the back and keep it dry. Because sometimes when we're up in the mountains, the skies open up and we get wet. So having just the bikes exposed isn't the end of the world. Having our gear exposed, well, that would suck. And when there's, you know, three kids and a crap ton of gear, it's not all fitting in the truck. So an enclosed canopy is the way to go with the trailer. That's what I like. So I'm gonna end this video off here because I'm just blabbing about nothing, but I will leave you with a cold start. Not really a cold start because I drove over here, but uh, nonetheless, I'll give you guys a little sound test of what this guy sounds like. Maybe. Please stand by. Okay, so I just learned something. If I have my running lights on, I cannot use the remote start to start the truck. That's very odd, so let's try that again. Give it a lock. There we go. Oh yeah, she sounds like an angry diesel, all right. So we're gonna end this off here. Appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate all you subscribers. And uh, I can't wait to uh, get out on the trails and start doing some more riding and some... We got some winter camping coming up and we've got some indoor arena cross coming up. Woo, almost lost the keys down the seat. Indoor arena cross coming up. We've got... What else is coming up? Oh, we got a winter rally coming up, like automotive rally and a few other things. So you have to stay tuned for that. We'll see you there.